in the sediment at the bottom of the Mediterranean lives an animal so small it's almost invisible to the naked eye. The animal is called Loricophera. The largest, they're just one millimetre across, only discovered about 40 years ago as they cling tightly to the tiny particles of gravel or sediment at the bottom of the sea, making them almost distinguishable from those particles. But then, what makes these almost insignificant creatures important? And how might it affect our view of life on other planets? Well, the name Loricophera comes from Latin. The Lorica part of the name is because it resembles the armour of the Roman legionnaires, called Lorica segmentata, formed of overlapping plates for protection. And the fair relates to wearing or bearing. So we have a segmented, armour-wearing, tiny animal. However, these creatures do also go through a larval stage and end up looking really like a tiny little jellyfish as an adult. Loricopherans are what's known as extremophiles, adapting to live in conditions which are so extreme that most organisms can't actually cope. Many extremophiles are single-celled organisms, but Loricophera are multi-celled. One of the conditions that would normally make life extremely difficult is the presence of sulphides. These can be produced by volcanic or hydrothermal vents in the sea floor and most animals can't tolerate the amount of hydrogen sulphide present in these areas. But some extremophiles in various locations around the world have adapted either to use the sulphur produced by these vents or to prey upon those doing so. However, the high sulphide levels are not the only extreme condition in the deep parts of the Mediterranean. In addition, Loricophera live in sediment in the deepest part of the Mediterranean, a region which contains water with a very high saline content. Results the water around the sediment having no oxygen dissolved in it. Now, this is a major issue for all other multicelled animals. In order to use energy in the cell, most animals use mitochondria to unlock the energy stored in sugars, using oxygen in the process of producing water and carbon dioxide as end products. Without oxygen, Loricophera can't utilise this process, but they have come up with an alternative strategy. Instead of possessing mitochondria, Loricophera have hydrogenosomes, which are the most likely transformed version of mitochondria. And in hydrogenosomes, the byproduct of the energy release system is hydrogen. This process is far less efficient than the standard process which takes place in mitochondria. However, without oxygen, an inefficient release of energy is better than nothing at all. While single-celled organisms are known to be able to survive by utilising anaerobic respiration, Loricopherans are the first multi-celled organisms known to be able to survive without oxygen respiration for their entire life cycle. Now, whilst this tiny and rather curious creature doesn't play a major role in the large ecosystems on Earth, it does mean that on a planet where oxygen was absent or extremely hard to come by, the advanced multicellular life is still possible. On Earth, Loricophera hasn't grown much more than a millimetre across. But, on another planet, without the need to compete against the more efficient aerobic animals, this could evolve into a significantly larger creature. The existence of Loricophera and other extremophiles here on Earth may mean we have to broaden out the conditions which are required for finding life on other planets. Indeed, other planets may be far more common than we originally thought possible. It may even mean it's possible to find multicellular life forms within our own solar system without having to go into the depths of space at 